Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So today's video is part three of the series I have been doing all about what you should be doing during certain time frames um, leading up to your wedding. Before I get into this video, I wanted to share an exciting update for all my wedding planning people out there. I am now offering um, virtual wedding planning services and a la carte services. So if you are, you know, mostly utilizing my videos and videos like this to plan your wedding and don't plan on hiring an actual wedding planner, but would like a little bit of assistance along the way, whether that's somebody that you can just call up and ask all of your wedding planning questions and be able to get them answered and then move forward with your wedding planning. Or maybe you need help with some design stuff. You don't really know how to pull your whole vision together. You've got a Pinterest board, you've been saving things on Instagram, but you don't really know how to bring it all together. I am now offering um, hour long consultation meetings as well as services such as mood board creation, um, design deck creation, day of timeline creating, custom floor plans, and more. So I will um, include a link in the description below if you want to check that out. I wanted to be able to extend my wedding planning knowledge and services to people all across the country and maybe to those of you that don't have it in your budget to have a wedding planner but you could really benefit from the, ass the assistance of one. Being able to kind of expand my reach and help people all over the country is something that I have been really excited about and something I wanted to do for a while. So check that out. And now without further ado, here is what you should be doing six months before your wedding date. So at this point, pretty much all of the big items should be checked off your list. All of your vendors should be booked. And now we're just getting into the nitty gritty details of the wedding planning, making sure that you are on the right track and not forgetting any of those small details. And also shifting focus a little bit more to the overall design and rentals and all of that part of your wedding. So if you haven't reserved any of your rentals, which if you are renting primarily everything for your wedding, um, like tables, chairs, linens, all of that, you probably want to be doing this before the six month period, but if you're just um, renting like a couple extra tables, maybe you just need a, an entry table, a gift table, a dessert table, something like that, you don't necessarily have to do that at the very beginning stages of planning, especially if you're in an area where there's a lot of resources. Most rental companies do have large quantities of things like this, like chairs and tables and linens, um, so you can get away with waiting a little bit longer for these items. So this is the time to make sure that you have everything you need as far as rentals and decor goes. So again, tables, chairs, linens, if you're doing a tent, um, all of your items that will go on the table. So if you're doing a full table setting, your china, your chargers if you're doing something like that, your flatware, um, and your glassware. All of those items will need to be reserved. Make sure you have a good estimate of your accounts for this. Um, typically six months out you're not going to have a final guest list or a final guest count and so you're going to be reserving based off your best guess of how many guests will be in attendance and then usually most rental companies as well as your catering company will ask for the final head count like two to four weeks before um, your actual wedding date so that you can finalize those numbers. But always overestimate and reserve items for like the max amount that you expect to come. So say you're inviting you know 150 people you really know that about half of them aren't going to come but there's a chance some of them you know might surprise you you want to be allowing allotting for at least like 120 of those guests even if you do expect a lot of them aren't going to come just in case so that you have enough um, and then finalize those numbers down the road also if you are DIYing any of your decor or anything at your wedding now's the time to start that do not leave your DIY projects to the very last minute don't be working on a wedding projects the week of your wedding, it's just gonna stress you out and it's going to take away from the enjoyment. Just trust me on this. So start anything that you plan on DIYing now and anything that you plan on ordering that's going to be handmade that you have to have shipped to you, now's a good time to do that as well, just to allow for any shipping delays or you know if anything goes out of stock or things are back ordered or anything like that, you wanna give yourself plenty of time for things to arrive just so that you're not cutting it too close to your wedding day. 
This is also the time to finalize your bridal party attire. So make sure that your bridesmaids have picked out their bridesmaids dresses or that you have given them the selection that you have chosen for bridesmaids dresses or maybe you're choosing a few different kinds and they get to choose from that selection that you created. And then um, groomsmen attire as well. Now, for the most part, I find that most groomsmen are it's a lot easier for them for whatever reason to get their attire and if you're utilizing one one company and groomsmen just need to send measurements to you or your partner make sure that your groomsmen are getting professionally measured somewhere so even though they may not be ordering it themselves or they might not be ordering it from the place they're getting measured from most um, like a lot of department stores that does uh, suits or jackets or any tailoring place have somebody there that will take their measurements and so have your groomsmen get professionally measured and then send those measurements to you or your partner whoever's in charge of ordering their attire. This is also when you want to have your hotel room blocked and make sure that you have transportation figured out and reserved if you are providing transportation to either your guests or your bridal party or yourselves um, if you just need a getaway car at the end of the night. Now's the time to make sure that you have all that transportation reserved and start thinking about the schedule so that you can put that on the wedding website if you're providing transportation for your guests. This is also the time where you will likely be finalizing menu items with your caterers and potentially doing tastings if you haven't already. And also book your baker and your desserts if you haven't done so already. You should also be making plans for your rehearsal dinner at this time. If you are reserving a, uh, a private space and not utilizing um, your venue or a personal backyard or something like that. Make sure that you have whatever venue you are choosing for your rehearsal dinner reserved and start making the plans for that. Um, I do have a whole video all about planning your um, wedding rehearsal dinner, so feel free to check that out if you need some more information and guidance on the overall process of planning the rehearsal dinner. Now's the time to also start mapping out your floor plan and your seating chart. So even though you probably don't have any RSVPs yet or maybe very few RSVPs, you can still start planning out your seating chart as far as where you are going to have your, you know, your immediate family and friends that you know for sure are going to be there and kind of get a lay of the land if you are doing a seating chart and kind of get those pieces started so that'll be a lot easier to plug things in as your RSVPs start coming in. If you have not selected your wedding officiant, this is also the time to do so. Um, many of my couples use a friend or a family member to officiate their wedding, so if that's something that you plan on doing, now's the time to kind of have that conversation with them and make sure that they're, they are on board. Um, if you aren't planning on having somebody close to you and you want to hire a professional officiant or your pastor or something like that, make sure you are doing that at this time. You also want to confirm your ceremony start time and have a rough outline of the day at this point. So your ceremony start time, what time hair and makeup will start for when you are going to start having photo coverage, um, kind of a rough outline of what your photo coverage timeline is going to be, um, maybe when dinner is going to start, and then when the end of the night is going to happen. So last song, last call, that sort of thing. So these are the main things that you should be taking care of six months before your wedding. And in the next video, we'll go into even more detail about all those tiny little details to make sure that you aren't forgetting anything when it comes to planning your wedding. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you next week.